Well, hey everybody. Um, as you can see behind me, I've got the arch uh, insulating paper installed. And so now we have to put some fire brick in there and the fire brick will sit on top of the white paper and um, extend the life of the stove, focus the heat up toward the pan, hopefully, um, all that in an effort to get syrup to boil faster. Um, so what I've been doing is I've been just kind of playing around with the orientation and trying to find the most efficient way to put the bricks in. Um, I'll also show you here. So um, some of the bricks need to be cut. These are called half bricks. Um, full size, but half thickness. That's where the half comes in. Uh, I went with all half bricks. Um, some people that I've read about um, use full bricks, but um, for me, um, that's what I could get. So <laughs> uh, I'll show you this, this cool little tool I got, um, how I cut the brick here. And then I'll show you some closer up versions and views of the, uh, of the arch itself. So I picked this little tile saw up from a major online retailer. Um, <laughs> and the reason why I decided to buy it, even though I don't do tile work or anything like that, is um, I was not able to find one for rent at a rental center um, that was convenient enough. And, and I didn't want to pay a rental for a long time because I wanted to be able to take my time with this and do it right. Um, I don't know if anybody else gets that analysis paralysis. Uh, I sure do. Uh, so I, I need some time to do some figuring and, and some planning and plotting and I, I don't want to be on the clock. But I was able to find this and it's probably not the greatest. No, take it probably away. I'm sure it's not the greatest uh, tile saw you could find, but um, for a guy sitting in his uh, barn putting together a stove to cook maple syrup, it's probably okay. So I'll just show you how um, this has been, it's had a few cuts on the blade already. Um, it's, it's a pretty neat little tool. Just FYI, if you use one of these, you do want to be off to the side. Uh, it sprays water and directly in line with the blade, but that's just general safe, table saw safety anyway. You always want to be off to the side so you, uh, you don't catch it if it kicks back. But uh, yeah, so far so good. So this is the view inside the arch and um, you can see I've started laying out uh, so there's some pieces off camera that I, I had to cut in front of the grate. This piece was cut to sit in right here. So it fits pretty nicely. You might see some gaps and some things and I'm, I'm not real worried about those. Um, ash will fill in and uh, it is protected by the paper. But also what the gaps let me do here is it's not apparent probably to sit here and look at it, but um, the sides of the stove flare up. So what that means you need to do is you need to lean your bricks. And by having that gap, I'm able to, without cutting, I'm able to lose this part of the brick. So I don't have to make a bevel. So that gap hides the, the one corner, turns it into a self-beveling um, piece, and then there will be, I will have to make some angle cuts, as you, you can see here. I want to change the angle a little bit. It was um, whiting out because of the, the white arch paper and these lights that I have, but if you can see here, 
This is the back of the firebox itself. And with that bevel, this is what I was talking about. Uh, you can see the bevel here. That'll be fairly easy to make that cut. Um, it'll be a straight cut, but I'll just be cutting the, the block, you know, at an angle. So just make a line there and just grab it line. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to get it close. I'm trying not to let perfection get in the way of doing the work. So uh, I'm gonna keep on going. And if there's something that uh, I think is interesting or, or you should see, then I will film that part. So here the base course is just in there loose or dry. Uh, a couple things, you know, I'm not too worried about a little gap there or a little gap here that refractory cement will fill in pretty nicely. Um, I decided I'm gonna leave the very front alone until the end. Uh, the reason why is I want to have a reference point for the angles. So my thoughts were, now that I have the, the base of the firebox dried and fitted, um, I would start building the walls. <clears throat> and to do that, uh, just have a line right here, straight down the middle, it's a nine inch brick. Uh, I'll cut that right in half and that will go staggered there, staggered here. And that way you won't have um, bricks with the seams being a stacked seam, it'd be a staggered uh, staggered seam. So this is uh, what I meant by the staggered seam. And then the third course will be a full brick. Fill right here and have another staggered seam for that. So for this part, the back part, uh, it made more sense instead of doing the, the bottom first, like on the firebox, it made more sense in my mind to do the sides first because um, the distance from the inside of the paper to the inside of the paper was 21 inches. And the fire bricks are nine inches long, which is not a multiple of nine or factor of nine. So uh, with the fire bricks being the width that they are, uh, lets me lay two bricks without cutting. Um, I'm going to decide here if I'm going to if I'm going to alternate seams um, or not. This is literally just a fire fire here. There's no wood ever gets up here. The wood stays down in the firebox. The flames will come up and go out, but um, I have to figure out if I'm going to uh, stagger seams. But the next step we'll do is just complete the side walls of the uh, back half. So here, um, it's not quite one brick width to the back wall. And off camera, I played around with some configurations and things, and I decided that I want the, uh, the brick to go to the back wall. Is that right? Um, yeah, I want the brick to go to the back wall. And so what I'll do, uh, this is, uh, this will be a square cut, and I have this brick that's got a little bit of a piece off of it, no problem. Um, so I'll just take this, and I'll use this as my measure. And I'll mark the line that I want to cut, even though I want the cut end to go against the back. Using that uh, real-world measuring tape lets me then make this mark. And I can cut this, flip it around, and the defect end will be uh, will be gone. So what we're looking at here is where the exhaust comes out, or the smoke, or whatever. Um, and I was trying to decide if I wanted to put this back wall course on top of the. Uh, the brick or on top of the fabric or paper. Um, this, this block here is the same thickness. It's a cutoff. And as you can see here, even without the, the top paper as it is here, it's too thick. So um, what I'll do then, 
that, that convinced me to put the uh, back wall course right onto the paper and then just fill in with uh, cut block um, for, the, for the rest of the back here. So I need to, uh, I'm gonna stagger these joints just slightly. I have to cut the same angle um, in this and, and maybe in this one too. Um, I have to wait and see what it's gonna give me. Uh, I have to figure out how to make a circle cut. I, I don't have any masonry tools, but um, I'm sure I can figure something out just to, to make a little bit of circle here. So <clears throat> basically I'll end up with two blocks across the bottom plus probably a partial, and then I'll end up with part of three blocks across the top. And then I'll have to fill in these little gaps here, which you see this one was not made for that, but sure looks like it was made for that. <laughs> so uh, I'll go ahead and make some more straight cuts and then I'll, I'll try to figure out the best way to get a round cut into this block. Just a quick view here now that I've gotten the angles cut into the corners. Um, obviously on the bottom I'll need to fill in that little piece. The top I don't really know what to do. Um, there's no Probably what I should have done is I should have done, uh, I should have had the blocks meet in the middle, um, which I suppose is still a possibility. Um, or I could just not worry about that little portion of the stove. Um, it's gonna be right out where the, the flue goes. So nobody's gonna be really working back there or standing back there. Um, if you have any good ideas or good advice, um, I'd hear that. But uh, just a little bit of cutting to do on the two corners of the bottom course here and just a little bit, maybe won't even have to cut anything off of the top course there. So I was looking and figuring and it just dawned on me what to do about uh, that gap in the back corner uh, that was approximately the thickness of one brick. So all I did was I slid the bricks on the top course only back I transferred that gap to the front. This is the front, the door where you'll load the wood and things. And uh, since this was the last part that I wanted to do anyway, it, it occurred to me that that would be an opportunity to do a couple things. First off, it would eliminate the gap in the back. I wouldn't have to do anything with that. Secondly, um, I can tie the top course of the front bricks in behind I left this for last um, for a couple reasons. It's going to have the most cuts, um, the most figuring and finger wiggling. Um, but I'm glad that I did in this instance because um, killed two birds with one stone and taking the gap out of the back corner and also tying in the front. So the, to get the front started, then the first thing I need to do is I need to chase this angle for the side, so I'll take my stick and that will be close enough. And then once I get this laid in, then I can start making my marks around the door. Um, this, this will be one of the more challenging cuts, um, but first step is to get this piece nibbled off here. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Well, this is my take on what the door cut piece needs to look like. The outside is the outside of the angle in the frame. This little part here will need to come off. Uh, hopefully I can do that with the blade, if not. But for now, I'm gonna start by cutting down the outside line, cutting along the bottom line and uh, now before I do that, I'm gonna cut the inside line too. And hopefully that will let me get this little nub colored in dark here taken out. Well, I'm happy to say that it actually worked like I thought it would. So I made the first cut down here, made another cut coming down that met up with this, made the down cut that took the chunk away, 
and there was a little finger left in here, so I just nibbled that away. Uh, it does look like that on the back side, no big deal. But on the front side, it goes right in. So um, I'll have to do that, looks like, one more time um, as I get up to the top piece here. So I've got to do that to this one. I've got to make a couple, at least uh, two simple, simple straight line cuts to meet the door. And then uh, tackle the top, top course. So I've got it now where I, I have the just the front top piece to do. And I want to do that in two bricks. And I uh, didn't want to span it with three and have a short section in here independent of, of the other bricks. I wanted it to have some surface here and a surface here. So I use, um, I use two scrap pieces, cut the bevel in the corner. And now what I do is I'll, I'll uh, do my best guess here, get close. And that's the height that I'll chase down from there. And then I'll need to take this, and this will actually all go away. So this brick, once I get the lines drawn, I'll show you. So this is what you'll, what you'll see. So this brick will have this part cut out, and that cutout will go uh, where the door is. Of course, you can't see it when it's turned its back to it. Uh, and then I'll probably need to cut cut the groove in for this yet. Yeah. You know what I might do? Let's see what it'll do if we just do that. Save the trouble. And we'll cut that. So that's what we'll end up with. We'll end up with a brick that, for the most part, is resting on this angle steel and just a little bit on the brick below it. Well, there you have it. I did leave some gaps because, uh, especially on this top course front row, I want to make sure I get some refractory cement between the joints so that they tend to want to stay together there. And the last of the cutting that I need to do, uh, I did um, just make two square cuts. It was close enough. Uh, I'm not concerned with the saw cuts. I suppose I could probably just reverse them, hide the saw cuts in the back. I uh, can also put refractory cement in there. So that was um, just a beginner's guide and how I cut the brick and my thoughts on um, bricking in the evaporator. Um, I don't think I have any of my masonry tools out here. Um, I know some folks just spread that refractory cement with their hands. Um, but I am going to try just getting some coats on the top in between the joints. You see this, this room I have here to give. I either need to put gasket in there. I suppose I could leave it. Uh, but since I've got the room to give, I'm not necessarily going to join the bricks from side to side. So I won't necessarily be refractoring these joints. Uh, but I do want to refract re-cement the horizontals so I uh, hope this video was useful for you uh, it's the first time I'm doing this and if it is great uh, thumbs up likes comments questions those are always welcome thanks for watching I hope you found it useful